Danny Flexen here for Seconds Out. Delighted to be joined once again by Hall of Fame promoter Frank Warren. Frank, how are you doing? I'm good, Dan. How are you, mate? I'm very good. The dust has presumably settled now from Tyson Fury against Dillian White. Biggest attendance at a boxing event in the UK ever um, at Wembley Stadium. Great stuff. Now, we've seen some stuff online, some suggesting the pay-per-view buyers in the UK have done two million, uh, not reputable sources necessarily. And then we had Eddie Hearn last night from Vegas saying that um, not much has been said about the view, so that normally means it hasn't done very well. Settle it for us. How's it done? It hasn't, certainly has done nowhere near two million. I don't know where that comes from. As regarding what Eddie Hearn says, who really cares what he says? We've done well. Tyson's done well. So did... Dillian got his money paid. I'm sure he, he's happy. And we've made money from it. And we're still waiting for all the numbers to come, but we're absolutely happy. It's made more money than the Klitschko Joshua fight. Now, you've only seen the early projections, but if you can ballpark it, do you think it's hit over a million, under a million, around that number? I hope it has. I hope it has. There's a way, way to go yet, but we'll, we'll find it. But I'm very, very happy with, with the numbers in the UK. Very happy. Have you spoken to Tyson recently? When did you last speak to him? And what's his mood like in terms of boxing at the moment? I spoke to him a couple of days ago, and uh, I didn't. Talk, I don't talk to him about boxing. It's no point at the moment. You know, he's had his fight. He's with his family. He's got his downtime, and he's enjoying life. And uh, whatever he chooses to do, as regarding boxing, he'll decide if he's not already decided in due course. If you were a betting man, what what would you expect him to do? I'd expect him to sit back and feel and and and, and just you know take in what's going on at the moment and then make a considered um, a considered judgment as that at where he wants to be. He's no rush for he's, he's no rush for anyway. I was reading. I mean, the Sky got onto us yesterday, asked us about the WBC and they're asking for what his intentions are. What what planet is everybody on here? He's got no mandatory due when he's you know that's he just had a mandatory defence and whatever he wants to do if he's not already what he said is where he wants to go or what he wants to stand by and that's what that's what he do but at the end of the day it's Tyson's decision you know he's a he's a he's not a schmuck he's a very smart smart guy and nobody is going to try and talk him into anything or try and make him do something he doesn't want to do. Whatever he wants to do has got to come from his heart and it's got to come from him and what his family want. Not from me or me trying to influence him or anybody else. It's got to come from here. And if he wants to fight on, fabulous. For me, I feel he should do it. Not just about money, but it's also about the fact that I don't think he's quite reached his peak yet. And... I would hate him to retire and then come back in a few years' time and, you know, say two, three years' time because he's at his peak now. That's how I feel about it. If he's going to retire, retire and walk away. But whatever he chooses to do, for me, I'm there with him. I'll support him all the way. So, yeah, we talk about Fury, um, whether he retires or not. How much of a factor in that decision do you think will be the availability of future big fights for him? So if a Joshua or Usyk fight's easier to make, will that influence his decision or is it just his love for the sport? I think it's a bit of both, really, um, Dan. It may, that may influence him, but he's, and his love for the sport. You, look, you know he's a fighting man. He comes from fighting stock. He's, um, you know, when he's in that gym... And he told me the last time I spoke to him, he was back in the gym. Who knows how he's going to feel? He may be when he's in the gym, he may think to himself, you know what, I want to, I want to fight. I'm training for something. I need, a, I need, I need an end game here. That may be the position. Um, I don't know, but he will make. He's, he's a very intelligent guy. He'll make his own decision. He, as I say, he's no, he's no idiot. Nobody, nobody is ever going to try and lead him up the garden path or try and influence him. He's too smart for that. And I believe in the early hours of Sunday morning, empty in Wembley Stadium, you bumped into the challenger, Dillian White. Uh, just just tell us about that meeting. 
Yeah, I'd just see him. And uh, my car got stuck behind a couple of others and Dylan was coming out with a few of his team and I, came, I got out of the car. He looks over and I looked at him and I got out of the car and went over and gave him a hug. And that was it. So all, all friends now? Well, I weren't an enemy of his to start with. I mean, all the stuff that went down before, and I don't know where it all came from, all the antagonism and all the, the you know, the bad feeling. It didn't come from us. You know, we won a purse bid, and all we wanted was that everybody worked hard to make the show a success, which it turned out to be. No one, I, you know, I never had a crossword with him. Listen, before the fight, obviously I'd said things, and right now I said things, you know, that, he, you know, he was pushing for a fight and it was a bit of a pain in the ass that this mandatory got in the way which we hoped was going to be was a settling between who was the best heavyweight in the world with the four belts on the line and that became part of the, part of a problem but anyway that's all in the past who cares at the end of the day you know Tyson won I always felt he'd win and I always felt he'd win the way he did I always felt he'd be too much for him and too much by the way for anybody that he fights now, we talked about viewing figures earlier. There was an announcement over the weekend, or just after the weekend, from The Zone that Katie Taylor, Amanda Serrano did 1.5 million views on their streaming service. Uh, the best female headline boxing fight. Uh, so, set a new record in that regard. What, what do you make of that? We've done 1.5. That's brilliant. That's a, the amount of women, that's a great number for men. I just hope that they got paid what a man would get for 1.5 million buys. You know, Do you think they did? I don't know what they got paid. I mean, they know what they got paid. Your light's gone off, mate. They know, sorry. They know, they, I don't know what they got paid. They got paid, only they know that and the person who paid them. But the fact of the matter is they done these big numbers. And, and you've got to remember, it's very important for his own to to make this thing, a, try and make this thing a success. I mean, they're right behind the eight ball at the moment. They're about six billion behind. And it's only because of a... Of Selen, Uncle Selen, you know, basically keep funding them and, and making this, you know, putting his money in that makes this thing work. So if if they deliver that number, I just hope the two girls got paid a lot of money. For 1.5 is big money, is big money. You know, when you look at what the numbers we were looking at for, or what we bid for Tyson, if we got 1.5 for a Tyson fight, It'd be huge money. We bid forty-one million dollars. That was pay per view, though, in fairness. Whereas there's well, well I don't, I don't know. What does they, what do they charge? In, in, in America, what do they charge in America for a subscription? Yeah, I'm not sure. So here, I pay, I think, seven ninety-nine a month now. I don't know what it is. So I don't, know, I don't know how it all breaks down in the territories. And it's not my business, really. At the end of the day, I just hope the two girls got paid, paid a lot of money. You know, they produced a, a, a very competitive fight. Um, a very, very competitive fight, and it was a great advert for wins boxing. But I'd now I spoke to Barry Hearn, your old uh, friend and sparring partner, not too long ago, about his new autobiography that's come out, My Life, not My Life, His Life. Uh, yeah, and I sent you a couple of screenshots, um, and I thought he was very complimentary about you. You weren't so sure. What, what did you make of the bits I sent over? And will you be getting a copy of the book as a whole? Well, my mate, my mate wrote it. Uh, was the author, uh, Nick Pitt. Very yeah. good writer, he used to be at the Sunday Times. Nick's a very, really a very good Paddy writer. And the Prince, yeah, the Paddy and the Prince. He's a very good writer, Nick. Um, so I'm quite sure it'd be well written, that's for sure. I haven't read it. Um, I can't even remember what you said. <laughs> oh, he sent over about... Um, breaking the cartel and all that stuff. Yeah, he said you're a very good promoter. He said every um, everyone involved in boxing in Britain owes you a debt because of your breaking of the cartel's monopoly when you broke in. And also said you were always a lot of fun socially, which I can attest to having seen you today. Well, I've not spent a lot of social time with him, to be quite honest. I, I, can't, I, can't, I, can't, I can count it on probably two fingers, Barry. But, uh, so, no, two, uh, I can't think of Yeah, look, you know, Barry's... Barry's Barry took our model, you know, and applied it to other sports. When I got into boxing, um, we brought all the razzmatazz in, all the, all the music, the ring entrances, the round card girls, and all the stuff that went with it. And it became very jazzy. And I remember he, he took a license out and he became partners with Terry Lawless, who left the cartel. 
And I remember at the time their quote was, we're taking boxing back to spit and sawdust. All this razzmatazz and all this stuff. We, people don't want to know that and so forth. And that was what Barry said. I, I can remember that like yesterday. And within, uh, I don't know, within three or four shows, they were putting all the music on. And he's t- taken that concept into darts and into other sports. So, you know, um, I'm, I'm flattered that he's used our model to, to take it into other sports. He's done brilliantly in other sports, and I'm taking my hat off to him for that. He's done, I mean, he's been in a lot of stuff. I'm really done temping, bowling, fishing, uh, was it uh, ping pong? You know, all the different things. Yeah, he's done all those things, but the, and he's tried them all, and he, he, he constantly is trying. But, um, you know, the darts thing works, and the darts obviously would work with the music and with all the razzmatazz, and, uh, and you know, good luck to him. Frank Warren, always appreciate your time, and, yeah, have a good one. And you, Dan, as always, mate, and long may it be. Thank you.